We are live. Good to go. We are good to go. James Urquhart in the house. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, welcome to our live shows. If you haven't tuned into one of our live shows before, welcome. Um, when you're finished with this video and you enjoy what we're doing, hopefully you'll look to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. If you are subscribed, welcome back. And I want to say a big welcome back to James Urquhart. James oh. Urquhart is, well, say hello, James. Yeah, hello. Know. Hello, everyone. Um, just been, to give everyone a bit of an insight into James. So James uh, was my, you were my trainee. Yeah. So went through the PJ program. Six years ago, was it now? Was it that long ago? Mm. Crikey. So, um, and during that time, James obviously still competed to a high level. We went to the same university together over in the States and um, still, still likes to hit the ball, still likes to compete. Did quite well already today. Shot one under par today. Beat Big me by a shot. There, yeah. Well done you. Beat the boss by a shot. Beat wow. the boss by a shot. Um, but one of the main things that James um, focus, has focused on over the last sort of few years and uh, is putting, isn't it? Specialising in putting. Specialising yeah. putting. Yeah. Um, you use the Sam Putt Lab, yeah. which if anyone um, doesn't know what the Sam Putt Lab is, it's a, it's a putting, well, it's a simulation device, isn't so that, it? It's an al analysis tool. Analysis yeah. tool that yeah. um, enables you to be able to sort of dial into those numbers. We see yeah. things like TrackMan, we see things like um, Foresight Quad, yeah. but it's kind of like the putting version of yeah, those, it is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is, yeah. You can yeah. get really deep. It's a little bit like gears for your club. <laughs> so is that you, right? You, yeah, so it's ultrasound for your club. So it's not, um, you know, it is showing you stuff like uh, face to path and, and strike and stuff like that, but it's also showing you what the putter's doing. Yeah. You can see it in a 3D version as well, so you can actually see what the putter's doing and how so it's, it's kind of moving on, isn't motion. It? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you've gone through obviously the, uh, the uh, program with Sam Putt Lab Science and Science and Motion guys yeah. and got obviously the certificates that you need to, to carry yeah, on Yeah, level that. three qualified, yeah. Lovely. So um, what we're going to do today is we're going to have a little look at the setup. actual setup. Setup to start with, yeah. yeah. So James, there's so many different setups, isn't there? Yeah. In a way, yeah, 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 um, yeah. depending yeah. on what, um, where well, you can go into that, talking yeah. about different heights of people, talking yeah. about different putters, the style of putters, the yeah. style of stroke, all yeah. of those sorts of things. Yeah. So let's dive straight in. Let's start talking a little bit about setup and how important it is yeah. as a foundation to the actual putting stroke itself. Yeah, 100%. Uh, if we come up um, over into this area here, we've got down the line as well, um, or a side view. That, face this um, way? Yeah, face that, face that way. So we're going to putt to that hole yeah. down there. Yeah. Um, we'll be focusing on this camera now from this point here, but just, yeah, talk to me a little bit about what you kind of wanted to explain a bit on today with, with setup and things. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try and sort of do it in a fairly chronological order. Um, first thing I would start would be alignment. Um, so I think a lot of people get alignment a little off um, and what tends to happen is they might have a slight inconsistency in their setup or an inconsistency in their stroke. Yeah. Therefore, um, from a linear perspective, standing where you are, looking to that hole there, um, if you get them to line it up 90% of the time, most people's eyes are generally pretty good. Um, they'll line it up towards their intended target. And then what I find quite a lot, quite a lot of the time is people will get over the putt, they'll feel uncomfortable, they'll feel like that line's not aiming where, where it should be. It might feel like it's going a little bit left, going a little bit right. And that can be due to a couple of things. That can be due because you might have a pull bias or a push bias. Stroke. Um, yeah, stroke. Okay. Um, and that, that can sort of influence it because you can feel, um, say if you're aiming, say this, say this is a straight putt and you've lined it up perfectly straight but you've got a pull bias, your natural tendency would be to want to aim slightly right at the cup. So um, I think it's quite easy for all of a sudden you to feel like you're aiming left of the cup even though you're not, Yeah. if you see what I mean. Well, my, um, my question straight away to that, and I'm sure there'll be some questions hopefully coming in from the audience later on, which we'll go through, yep. um, is, well, but what do you fix first? You know, it, so, is, yeah. it, is it really that you should be fixing set, set your up. alignment? Set, 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 set up, up is the first thing. Start, set up first is the first protocol. thing, and alignment would be my first protocol. So yeah. what, I'll, what I'll quite often ask people straight off is, you know, do they line up, which isn't absolutely imperative. You don't have to line up the ball. No. But I, I think for the majority of people, it's a good starting point. Good reference it's, point. Yeah, it's a good yeah. reference point. If, if you can hit... Uh, five putts from five foot straight up the hill yeah. um, and, and line every single one up dead straight yeah. and hit reasonable putts towards the target, there's something right going on there. Yeah, okay. Um, if you're getting some inconsistent misses left and right, then there's obviously something wrong with a stroke or something wrong with a setup. Um, but what, what, what I tend to find is um, if, you, if, if you get people who don't like lining the ball up, it's usually because they've got 
um, either in, an inconsistent or a consistent tendency. Yeah. But that doesn't necessarily need to be inconsistent. So you get some really good putters, like my brother used to be one. Um, he, he never used to line the ball up. He used to hate it because he had a push bias. So he'd push everything. He would leave the club about, I had him on Sam. He was about two and a half degrees open at impact. Um, and, and that's fine because he would do it about 98% of the time. So, so if because you're he's doing, if you've got a he's, consistent fault, because he's got a consistent fault, he's done it from a young age. If I now see that and I see that that's 98% consistent, I can see all the other numbers on Sam are really good. Yeah. Or if I can just see just from a putting lesson in general, just spending half an hour with someone, I can see someone's got a consistent bias. Yeah. Then I'm not likely to change that. I'm not like to fiddle around with someone. Um, just, just something I wanted to show everybody is you're talking about a line and, and I'm, I'm just going to show you this one now. Hopefully uh, you'll be able to see that is that you've got the line on the golf ball there. Um, there are there are tools out there that you can draw lines on, but ultimately most golf balls out there nowadays have actually got some type of line me up type of thing on them. Yeah. Um, and that's the sort of thing that you're talking about, isn't it? It's yeah. focusing on getting that 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 line when when setting up to the to the part going towards your intended target which might be the aim point of that putt that's right yeah if you've got a straight putt obviously it's straight in the middle of the hole if it's yep. a right edge putt it's aiming to the right side of the right edge of the hole 100 uh, percent. if it's inch outside you're aiming an inch outside depending on what you do okay yeah yep. and obviously there's a lot there's a lot in putting that's psychological so someone could have a perfect um someone could come to me and say you know I, i'm missing a lot of putts and they might not if they're not looking at their stats they might not be able to figure out where they're going wrong perhaps and sometimes i find i've had it with people where can see them, they're putting really well on Sam, take them out on the putting green, yeah. and I can give them a few putts, take them around the putting green. I start to notice that maybe psychologically, something like a left to righter for a right hander, yeah. they'll start, um, so say, say it's two balls outside left, good pace, they'll aim at two balls, two balls outside left, and then because their last look is at the hole, they come back to the ball yeah. and they try and stroke it towards the hole because this is their last feedback. They're kind of thinking it as go towards target as opposed okay. to going towards intended target right okay um so th there's psychological issues there as well obviously but i think for the most part alignment is my first port of call that's where i'll start with so let's get you into a setup position and just show everybody what what kind of um what you would let's say go through um as a as a process yeah so um, for, for me um, and i know this isn't possible for everyone because yeah. i know some people struggle to get on the down here on their haunches, but I think it's not necessary um, to, to, to have to line it up. Okay. But what I think is important is to be able to stand um, quite a bit back from the ball, I find is better. I tend to find that when people, I sometimes see people go, uh, where they go wrong is they try and line it up, but they're trying to line it up like this, yeah. not from a linear perspective. You've got- Okay, so you want them down behind the ball. I want to try and be behind it and as far back as possible. I don't want them to be over it. I want them to have sight of the hole, so yeah. to be back here a little okay. bit. So I'd prefer someone tweaking it sort of like all the way back here as right. opposed to being on I top see. of it and not yeah. really having yeah. a view of yeah. your intended target line. Okay. So I'll, that, that's obviously um, an important start point. But certainly, even if you're not going to line it up, getting way back so that you can pick your intended yeah. target point. And then there's various different drills that you can go through, even if you're not using a line, which will give you pretty quick feedback okay. as to whether you're starting it on your intended target line. Yeah. Something as simple as you can get um, like a, a couple of nails and some rope yep. or a couple of glasses and some rope, uh, you know, string yep. type thing. And you can just put one behind the ball, one at your intended target, put the ball directly in line yeah. with that piece of rope to see if and just do some strokes, right. start yeah. to see if your ball veers off. Okay. It's a really, really simple one. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really take... Any well, with with modern tech, you can always just put a phone down. But you just put your phone and down. And see where it's, see where the ball's actually. Yeah, see where the ball starting. starts. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, okay. it's pretty good. Pretty good feedback. Okay, so once you've got your setup in that position, there, where, where are you? Where are you taking players from here? What? Well, the first the first thing I would ask is once once we've kind of established that they're happy um, that that ball is going to their intended target. Yeah. I quite often get a lot of a lot of bad putters uh, or people who are struggling with their putting. Yeah. They're kind of set up to it and they'll go. That now that doesn't feel right. I feel like I'm aiming left. I feel feel like I'm aiming right, and that's where I've got to kind of potentially take a few videos or just have a good look at them yeah. and, and have a check on their and that's, uh, the way that's more their alignment of their eyes, isn't it? How yeah, their eyes yeah, it's up. yeah. It can be alignment of their eyes. It can also be um, a good example would be if I put a ball directly in like let's say for argument's sake this is a straight putt. Yeah. If I put that ball directly in line with the hole there and I get too close to the ball, so my eyes are over the ball. This side. Right? 
I'm going to tend to uh, look at, at that putt and that ball is going to look left. Yeah. Over there. Okay. Right? If I get too far away, that ball's going to look right. That's if, a really if, if good that makes reference. Sense. I like so, that. Yeah. So a, a really simple one, which I'm sure probably loads of people have um, heard before, which isn't a myth. I stick by it, you know, stick by it pretty much most of the time, not, yeah. not to an exact science, but it's just dropping a ball from Once your eye line. Once you're in setup position. Yeah, dropping a ball from your eye lines, that's a really good start. You know that your um, sort of like your, your position is over the ball from there. So um, that's kind of setting up in this position here. So once I'm in this in this place yeah, here, it's in that position. Exactly. then I can just take the ball and drop it down and there see where yeah, I'm so at. So there yeah. I would need to be a little bit more over the ball from there. Pretty much perfect there, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I am you know, I, I take it with a pinch salt. So it doesn't necessarily need to be absolutely perfect. And it also depends on like, you could call it like the plane of your eyes, yeah. like basically kind of the direction of your eyes. So if you had like a laser on your eyes, yeah. it depends on, and I, I quite often find that's down to posture, but it's also down to sort of like neck tilt or okay. how, how you tilt. So some people might be a little bit more upright and a little bit closer. Other people might be a bit further away and a little bit more over, over it. it. Some people might be quite upright, but with a tilted head. Yeah. Those things, as long as they're working, like if someone's putting really well and they've got um, those fundamentals down and they work for them and they're hitting it down intended target, then there's kind of more than one, one way to, uh, to get the job done, really. Yeah, okay. And then once you've then established where your eye line is, yep. um, where does, like, we move on down into the ball, maybe ball position and yeah, like so ne what? Yeah, so next thing would be ball position. So obviously Sam can tell me this yep. um, really well. You can see whether people are getting backspin, which I see a lot of, um, whether people are getting neutral spin, whether people are getting top spin or top plus plus, which is basically they're getting the ball really rolling. And, and um, what would you be liking to see? Obviously, you don't want to see um, you don't want to see too I, much backspin on the ball. No, I don't like to see backspin. Um, although I have seen people who who putt reasonably well with backspin, but you're going to have limitations there. Yeah. So um, there's going to be certain circumstances on cer certain surfaces where I think you might struggle a little bit more. Okay. Um, so I would tend I would tend to prefer a neutral to top spin bias, um, and you're going to get that by there's there's several again there's several different ways that you can do it, but um, I tend to like people uh, I tend to like to see people more a little, a little forward in their stance. So if you take a, a reference point of say that's your middle point. Yeah. So if that uh, if you get set up to that ball there then. I mean, I, I, I go quite far forward myself. Yeah. So I, I would say, I mean, you have a look there. You tell me what, what, well, what you yeah, think. Well, yeah, I mean, if you took if you took center of your stance being more there. Sort of center of heel, yeah. So you're quite a bit good forward, yeah. three inches forward there, aren't you? 100%, three yeah. Three inches forward of center. Yep. And um, I don't think that's a... Yeah, that's necessarily an exact science there. You, you can sort of play around with that and see what sort of um, helps you to get the best roll because different people all um, naturally hit up on the ball more, yeah. hit, hit um, up on the ball less, yeah. have less dynamic loft, have more dynamic loft impact. So some people like a forward press, which is going to... De-loft? All that's going to do is reduce loft, yeah. Okay. So, so some people will have a forward press, it will, it will reduce your loft. Yeah. But then if you can, if you can twin um, forward press or... or lowish loft most putters have about three degrees of loft yeah um with with an upward sort of rise angle of maybe uh, three or four degrees you're going to create decent top spin on the ball get good, good roll is there it. anything that, that, that people can do from a check point of view let's say at home so if they're on their carpet now at home and they want to test this out yeah um we talk about start position there yeah by moving ball position can that affect start position um it yeah, it can a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've played around with that idea um, where, uh, and it's a little bit to do with the, whether you've got like a left or right dominant eye. Okay. Um, but if you're, if you've got a um, right dominant eye and you go too far forward, the ball can start to look like it's veering off to the left a little bit. I've had okay. that with people where they've yeah. pushed their ball position way forward and they've started saying the ball feels like, so then they have a, a sort of tendency to want to push it when okay. they don't actually need to. Yeah. Um, so you've, you've got to play around with it for feel. And again, I always go back to um, slightly shorter, sort of within the six foot range, so that you've got less variables. I like to go to that sort of six foot range, get a straight putt, try yeah. and knock out as many variables as possible. Because what you want to do is you want to have a stroke that's going to be repeatable. Yeah. Um, then you can start playing around with variables. And uh, on a day, on, on a round like today, I just turned up, I just whack a few putts around the green. I'm not thinking about stroke. I'm not thinking about technique. No. Absolutely nothing. I, I, to be honest with you, I barely even on, on the putting green. I won't really go for my routine. I'm just trying to get a feel for feel pace. For the pace. Really, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
as a reference point then, what should people be focusing on ball position wise? Just basically anything forward of centre? Anything forward of centre. And, and yeah. if, if, people, if, players center. Have got, if players have got, a, 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 let's say, a ball that's back in their stance or centre to back, yeah. so um, from this point in the middle here moving to the sort of trail foot, yeah. where would you... Where would you? What, what's what damage that's is gonna, that going to That's going to cause. So you're you're going to um, potentially reduce the loft, especially yeah. on longer putts. You, it's almost impossible to be able to hit, hit have have a um, upward uh, angle hitting into the ball from that sort of position. Um, so you, you're going to have a lot of putts where, uh, especially on longer ones, yeah. where you get that one, and you've probably seen it where people go, oh, it bubbled. And actually, it, it didn't bubble. It bubbled off the face because yeah. they had, you know, incorrect loft. They've hit it into the ground, and it's bubbled off the face. Because obviously, you haven't got you haven't got a loft. You haven't got a lot of loft on the putter here. So no. you've got a lot of forgiveness. So if you're kind of de de lofting it, anything at all, really, sort of two or three degrees, and you're starting to hit down into it, your predicted launch is going to be down. Yeah. And that's going to cause big problems, especially I I, I find. Um, uh, d doing a few tests on Sam, I, I find people find it more if you're on a um, if you're on an up. If, you, if you've got an uphill putt, yeah. you're kind of in an uphill position. Because you, you got you got an uphill putt, people wouldn't tend to sort of... Lean back. Go with it, yeah. So yeah. all of a sudden, they get even more bubbly with it. So they pop it down into the ground almost. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so that can become quite a big problem. A poor roll, and yeah. then just really difficult for distance control then. So we figured out what our start line is going to kind of be, and we've worked on that and yep. seen that. We've seen, we talked about a ball position. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about alignment yep. with regards to our body alignment. Okay. You know, how would that, how, you know, is it really important that you have your feet, your hips, your shoulders, everything sort of lined up to your target? Or, or are you kind of open yeah. to the fact that some players like to stand a little bit open, some, some people like to stand a little bit closed, some yeah. people like to have their shoulders maybe open? How, how does it, which, which one kind of makes more of an effect? Yeah, I'd, I tend to have, um, I, I'd, I tend to try and if, if people have got, any sort of big deviances at all that I can see, I will try and tweak that a little bit. Okay. Um, if someone's got their shoulders open or closed, because it has an impact. It has an impact on the way the arms and the hands are going to kind of work into the ball. Yeah. If someone's, you know, super consistent and they're putting really, really well, like at the moment, I'm, um, we're, we're doing first team um, county training and, so, you know, some really decent results on there. Okay. And sometimes it's tricky because you don't, you know, you don't want to step on people's toes when they're already good putters, you yeah. know, and a sort of like... Um, you know, make make big changes, but I think subtle changes at address. Uh, if 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 they're slightly out, slightly closed with the shoulders, slightly open with the shoulders, yeah, um, slightly open with the hips, um, all these sorts of things will definitely have an impact on the way you part for sure. And open being being yeah, aiming uh, left of target yeah. and closed being sort of aiming down the right hand yeah, side yeah, of yeah. target. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Okay, um, that will have that will have a big impact um, just on on rotation. And, and the way you're able to manage the club face through the ball. Right, okay. Because it's fine margins. Putting is, you know, um, it's fine margins, Tiny isn't margins, it? Yeah. 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 Okay, let's hit um, a few putts then. Let's um, yeah, so I think, talk you through. I think probably the next thing, which, uh, you know, a lot of players, a lot of players will get from um, playing more, you know? Yeah. But um, I think one thing is, is strike, definitely. Okay. Um, Strike um, location on the face. Yeah, strike location on the face. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that I think a lot of people don't tend to think about too much because, well, the ball gets rolling, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not like if you, if, if you uh, struck a bad tee shot or something like that, it's going to put you in any trouble. So I think sometimes people don't even really contemplate strike. They don't think that they've struck it poorly, but you get them on Sam and you can really start to... Um, see some funny little strike patterns, you know, people, I mean, some people have some tendencies, they'll be really toey or really healy, but what I tend yeah. to find is people just have poor, um, poor dispersion across the face. So they get, they get quite loose with their, with their strike location. And there's a couple of ways that you can, a um, couple of ways that you can work on that really simple ones. Yeah. Um, you can get, you can get like blue tack. Blue tack either side. Yeah. Yeah. And it's instant feedback. Instant feedback, like you'll are be able you to inside, see. Are you in those positions? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can be quite harsh on yourself. Or another another one is um, like a little T drill that won't necessarily help your path because you could be choppy or into out. Yeah. But if you've if you've literally got, uh, you sh you sh I think you should always be quite harsh on yourself. So have T's, you know, only just outside the the uh, width of the putter. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you if you put a poor stroke on it and you hit it out of the toe, you're going to hit the inside T. Um, so that's quite a good strike drill as well. And 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 strike is. Um, just like with 
with any um, part of golf, strike is king. Like it's going to affect your rotation throughout the stroke. Yeah. It's going to affect um, your ability to be able to control the face at impact. If you catch it slightly toey, just like we know with, um, with say you hit an iron shot, it might start to sort of glance off the putter and go a little bit right. Yeah. Vice versa with the heel. So it will affect um, not only distance control, obviously, which is yeah. which is an obvious one, but it will affect it will affect accuracy as well. Quick question here from uh, Johnny Brooks come in. Can you talk a little bit about eye dominance at setup? Okay. So is that something, and I know you've spoken about that in the past, yeah, about yeah, yeah. obviously one being left eye or right eye dominant. How does that, how does that affect things or how, how, so, what's the focal points here? Yeah, so I, t I tend to play around with that depending on people because it, it's, it's a bit of a strange one. There's no, there doesn't seem to be a rule of thumb for it, but what I tend to find is that um, if you get if you get someone who's who's set up well at address, um, and and they're left eye dominant, yeah, and you get them to line the ball up, and the ball's going slightly off to the left, yeah, I tend to find that the best the best way to uh, to work with uh, dominant eye positions is is to shuffle your ball position. Um, so if so if you're left eye dominant and you're seeing the ball go left, if you shuffle your ball position slightly further back or slightly forward, you'll tend to find that the ball, uh, your sort of eyes will start to feel like they're going uh, the Ball will feel like it's going in the right direction. Right. Um, so I've I've done a a little bit of uh, playing around with that, and I, I tend to find quite good results with that. So just playing around with ball position, if if you uh, and it's quite simple. Is is he asking how you find what you're doing tonight? No, just more just have a, probably a discussion about it. And yeah. um, um, I've got another one here, um, which I suppose uh, Martin's mentioned here. Martin's mentioned I've lacking consistency in strike. I mean, we've pretty much covered that in the fact that. Um, he, he's he, lacking consistency. He's lacking right? a little bit of consistency in strike. It feels like uh, I almost he's almost like topping the ball with his putter at times. Right, yeah. Any kind of hints for that. And, yeah. and probably yeah, you'll yeah, find yeah. that with longer yeah. putts. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I mean I, I think a lot of that is, is fundamental. So if, if if I was to spend sort of half an hour or if he just went to see his sort of local PJ professional and, and spent half an hour just cleaning up the fundamentals, that can Make a difference. It won't always. No, um, this, this is uh, so. This is Arnie over in. We were in. Um, Spain, oh yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just hey, thinking Arnie. back to. I'm just thinking back to maybe when I played with him on the golf course. Um, would you find that maybe someone like Martin can be a little bit lateral in his movements? Yeah. On, so because uh, um, that can affect strike in a big way, can't it? As yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the, that would be the biggest. Start. That would be the biggest one, which we'll get into a little bit more on stroke. Yes. Um, but that, yeah, that would be pelvic stability. So uh, there's some drills that we can go through in a minute that will right. help him out with that. That'll be um, on the next live, then, won't it? Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah, be talking yeah. about Keep that one. In, yeah. So um, talking about strike there. Um, just yeah, let, let's hit a couple of putts, James, and just um, and just show everyone kind of what you're. Um... Yeah, so I think um, I think when you're putting, like, it's good to have the same sort of routine every time. Yeah. Um, I say that. I, uh, I I tend to have a slightly different routine depending on whether I'm trying to hole a putt, um, as to opposed to whether I'm trying to get a feel putt. La yeah, lag, lag a putt up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if if I've got that's a putt, interesting. This... So you're never always thinking about holding the putt from everywhere. No, no. Weirdly, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. Like, if I, that's not to say if I hold a thirty foot, I wasn't trying to hold it. But um, the hole is all of a sudden become bigger. Yeah. So if it, if it goes in that, in the hole like that, that is, um, I, I I see it as a bonus. Really. Yeah. I see it as a bonus. I don't see it as uh, you know because a two putt's good, right? If you look at tour averages. Yeah. So it's all, it's all down to sort of like the distance of where, as soon as I get to a point where I feel like it's not breaking too much, uh, the greens aren't rapid fast, there's not too much break on it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not too far away. If I feel confident over it, then I, I tend to change my routine a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll line the ball up, um, step behind like I would with pretty much all my putts. Yeah. But as opposed to um, going in and getting a bit of a feel with the practice stroke, I tend to sort of just set right up to it and just just hit the putt. Okay. So I don't. Um, Question then I've got a is stroke. you're talking about lining up and we talk about maybe going out and playing just before the round. You know what should what should players be doing? Should they be lining up on the putting green or are you just like you talked about there? You're going yeah. to get a feel out there. Yeah, yeah. Should so you be going through your little routines prior to going out to your round? How important is that? I would say it's too late for that. 
okay. my opinion. So, so that's, uh, that's I mean, kind of like panic practice. It is panic practice. Yeah, yeah. You, you've, you haven't had enough time during the week to do it. So now you suddenly do it 10 minutes before you tee off. Um, and I think that can occasionally get people in a little bit of a, like you say, a panic frame of mind. Yeah. As opposed to just wandering around, having a laugh with your mates, getting a feel for the greens. Because that yeah. is essentially what, what it's all about. You should have had those, um, you know, the month, months and weeks before you should have been preparing um, those sort of, uh, routine drills, short putts, getting confidence leading into the tournament. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I would definitely say it's, it's, it's not something personally that I would, um, not that I'm against people doing it, but no. I, would, I, I wouldn't say it's necessary. Okay. So pretty much what we've talked about today is obviously uh, alignment on the ball, making sure that people are aware of exactly where their start position. And that's probably yep. the most important point to take away from today is yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're working on putting, try your hardest to focus on your start position. Nobody, you know, no, not many people like to practice this because no. they don't like the result yeah, of yeah, what they're yeah. gonna get because yeah. they can't get that ball. And when you're at home, you can chuck a coin down and get, see if you can get that ball to start, you know, a couple of paces in front of you, get the ball to start kind of over that. If you use things like putt out, they've got gates that you can kind of go through. Or yeah, there is, yeah, it's like good that. for path, that's um, good for strike. Good for path, good, yeah, absolutely. One more um, thing that we haven't touched on yeah. um, with, with setup would be sort of like your forearm angles and your forearm positions yeah, as you're okay. leading into. So obviously yeah. they, they will change depending on how your setup is, but um, I, I tend to sort of like the feel of having a little bit more of a um, Bryson dechambeau -y kind of. Okay. Feel. In what respect? So you're talking coming this way or yeah. this way? No, 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 a little you? bit of a radial movement. So sort okay. of getting that, that feeling there. Yeah. But um, the, the, reason, the reason for that is because I'm sort of quite over the ball and quite upright. Okay. Whereas someone who's a little bit more in this position here. So if you and turn, quite, turn that way so everyone can see you on your angles that way. A little bit more in this position here, sort of over the ball. Yeah. They might be a little bit more anchored in with okay. their elbows. Yeah. Therefore, they can have the putter sort of in a lower position there. So yep. it depends on really your, your setup position would be. But the rule of thumb is, um, and and this is why I think arm lock is great, is um, to sort of have the the shaft and the grip of the putter sort of running up running the stem, up, yeah, yeah, like running up your forearm, yeah, sort of angle. If you can have it somewhere so, fairly close to that. So just putting, let's say you put me into that position. So when you see players like this, hundred percent, yeah. Like what, what's going on there? Like yeah, you see yeah, that a lot, don't you, with yeah, players that yeah, are in yeah, this yeah, position? Yeah, 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 so yeah, this yeah. is where you would say is, is a no-no? Yep. And you would like to see more kind of in that, in that sensation? There you go. Yeah, and I see this a lot as well, which you might want to just face this way a little bit. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's perfect. So I see this a lot as well. So it's not just about lie angle. So no. it's not just that the toe's up off the ground, although that will affect strike. Yeah. Um, that's also going to affect rotation and also it's going to it's going to affect your ability to be able to stroke the pus, uh, putter properly because yeah. it's not actually working with with your um, well it's not working with your body is it so and, and does that does that affect how you put that club into the palm yeah of your it does hand yeah there? yeah I prefer so if going anything, more I, up through yeah I, well, I through tend the palm? I tend to see um, if anything I'm yeah. I, I'm kind of favorable favorable towards having a, a weak lead hand. Okay. Um, in the respect of um, weak being more this way. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. being so, yeah. so definitely having that instead of being more over here like you would in a normal yeah, golf yeah, golf yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah. Having definitely that thumb pointing more down the shaft. That's right. Yeah. And and I know obviously a lot of people um, have that sort of feeling anyway because the uh, putter grips tend to be flat, flat on the front. On front. But I, I almost border, I border on the feeling of sort of feeling like the thumbs almost running down the left side of it. So uh, over um, this way. Even. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like a, certainly a weaker position. I, I, I think helps um, with stability of rotation. Yeah. Um, okay. And I think that's where arm lock really helps because a lot of people get it in that sort of position. Yeah. Lock it in. Jordan's a really good example of that. He's yeah, a great putter he gets... and he, he sort of locks it in there. And I think that's a great move. And so that, that has a setup for me just feeling like, and it, and, and it almost feels, James, if I'm honest, it almost feels like I'm, I am just forward pressing just a fraction there. Yeah, yeah, just to try and yeah. get that um, yep. into that position there. Yep. And then the and then the trail hand just comes on That's it. and just sits on sits on depending on where that player is gonna Yeah, depending on whether they're right their, below left or left below right, yeah. But but having this position is like the old way, you know, you yeah. see that all the time. Yeah, you see that a lot with people. Um, yeah, I would be changing that straight getting away. Getting more into this position and then and then does that maybe make you we talked about the feeling of rising up as we come through the putt there. Yep. Is that that naturally feels like it wants to do that it wants anyway. To do that a little bit more, yeah, which is a good move because that means someone 
um, who, who uh, as someone asked a question earlier about dominant eye and ball position, yep. um, someone who wants to be a little bit more central because that feels like a better location for them to, um, for, for their alignment, yep. they can start to do that. And, and that is another field that you can have. You can stick a couple of coins just before the ball yep. um, and sort of get that feeling a little Rising bit more, up. yeah, a little bit more of a prominent rise through the ball. Um, <clears throat> Last question that I, well, what, last thing that I want to just sort of say is that obviously people people will be watching this at home or in their offices or wherever. Um, just give me a quick drill. I know we haven't gone into the pace putting side of things, but just give me a quick drill that somebody could do at home in a small space that they could maybe work on a, a putting drill that would give them pace control. Pace is there control. anything? Is there anything that you jump that jumps out to you that, um, um, you, that yeah. you could get that person to work on? For pace control. Yeah, pace yeah, control. there's a few. Um, so uh, if you're in, say, in your front room or something like that, yeah. grab a coin or something like that. Yeah. Pop one is quite a good, it's quite a fun one, actually. That, okay, uh, coin, let's say that's a coin. Let's say that's coin there. Yeah. Um, you don't need a hole, you just have another coin over here. Yeah. So you can start, you can, to be honest with you, you can do it however you want. So for example, you could have starting location here. So you've got coin here. Yeah. You've got a coin one pace in front, so say a yard in front here. Yeah. Then you've got another coin. Two paces. Say two or three paces over here, yeah. Yeah. Then all you're gonna do um, for pace control, just to start working on your pace control, other yeah. than what we'll speak about in a minute, sort of uh, working on rhythm and tempo and stuff. Yeah. Um, this is quite a fun game, is, is literally just hit a few parts, and what you're gonna do is um, you're gonna try and get it past this first ball here, but only, only by a fraction. Yeah. Okay, so this green's rapid fast. Draw, so now draw, we move, draw, mo draw move, that back. move the coin here, okay. right? Because that's where I've hit it to. Yeah. Now I've got a point. Now I've got to go again. Now the issue is, is obviously, I, I want to be cute, but I don't want to be too cute. Because if I'm too cute, You're gonna and leave I leave it short, it short yeah. zero point, or you know, uh, only, only one point for that game. Okay. So I want to make sure I'm getting it past this every time, yeah. bringing it back to my start point again. Okay. But not so far past. That you're beyond that, that boundary. That now I'm here. Yeah. I got another point, but in a minute I'm going to run out of room. Yeah. So if I'm playing against my mates and, I, and we've got a little uh, sort of like world record system going on, like see that. how many you can just keep lagging past it, bang, yeah. bang, bang, bang. That's quite good fun. And that's that's then, and it's just that's a good one because you can see how many points. So let's say you've got a living room space. That's the end of your living room. That's the beginning of your living room. And you're going to see how many points you can get before you get to the end of the wall. That's right. Yeah, and, and, you, just and, get, and, and you, you can. It's a bit like par par eighteen, isn't it? Yeah, with the short yeah. game. Whereas you know you might go out and shoot twenty odd in the yeah. first first yeah. week, but then you'll get better and better. And in, in this game, you can set yourself some challenges where you could play that game where you look to try and get your numbers up as, as much as you possibly can. Yeah, hundred percent. And 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 one key with uh, like like any any of this, which I speak with uh, speak with the county juniors and, and the county boys as well, is is to give yourself one opportunity. Yeah. Say like, it's, I don't know, if you get an opportunity to practice this, let's say you're really busy and you, you can only practice it once a week. Only do it once a week, that's yeah. the hard part. So it's really, really easy to, to sort of uh, have, a, have a couple of putts and go, I'm gonna do that again, I'm gonna do that again. Yeah. Anyone can get good at that, just yeah, going over and over and over again. But yeah. if you can go, say you're practicing every day and yeah. you just do it that once, you have that one go, you're hungry to come back and try and do it. And it also shows that you're actually getting it straight off, yeah. straight off the bat and not just, hitting over and over and over and over again. I think yeah. it's easy to get a good score that way. Good. Right, I think that's it, James. Thank you very much for your time. Brilliant. Talking about Thank you very putting much, setup. If you've got any questions down in the uh, link down in the description down below will be James's e email. I think we've popped the email in there. Um, James's email, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to fire an email over to James. Um, if Obviously, he's based at Torquay Golf Club, so he's still over there. Um, yeah, and, and also actively Thanks, doing lessons and, um, yep. and taking those on. So any questions you've got, send them over to him. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel and you like what you're seeing from these live shows, then hit that subscribe button, and we'll see everyone again on the next live. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.